Welcome to the Cabral House Call. I'm Stephen Cabral and I'm here today to answer your questions that you've submitted through stephencabral.com forward slash askcabral or anywhere through emailing us at support at stephencabral.com or on social media. So our first question today is how to say no in different social settings. Really great question because the only way that you're ever going to get to your goals and achieve your goals and maintain your goals is by being you, is by deciding at some point in your life that you are worth making these decisions even if they go against the grain of what some of your friends or family are doing. Because your friends or family, if they're making a certain decision, doesn't necessarily mean that it's the right one for you. It might be the right one for them. And it doesn't mean that they're bad people. It doesn't mean that you're a bad person for having a different outlook on life or different decision. So a lot of things that we find is that sometimes a husband and wife or two partners, they don't agree on the same nutrition plan or they don't agree on like a set bedtime or whatever those things are. But you again, that doesn't mean that your opinion is wrong and I do think at certain times you need to decide that I'm willing to compromise on this but I'm not willing to compromise on this and the things that you shouldn't compromise on are the ones that are going to bring you closest to your goals and it's also the decisions that are keeping you from achieving your goals. For example, let's say you go out with a group of friends and they like to always you know, have a bunch of drinks on Thursday, Friday, Saturday night, maybe it spills over into Sunday when you're watching football or some of the games or whatever it might be, that is not going to get you to goal no matter what diet book you read or anything that you've read online about being able to drink alcohol and lose weight at the same time. Can you maintain your weight with having one or two nights a week of having a couple drinks? Yes, but not if you're trying to get to those goals, goals first. That just doesn't make sense. So what I'm saying to you right now is for a certain period of time at least, you're going to have to be able to make that decision to say to your friends with, you know, at first when you're not as confident, you can just make up an excuse. Like, oh, I'm not feeling that well right now, which you're not. You're not feeling your best. I'm not going to drink tonight. I'm still going to come and I'm going to hang out and I'm just going to drink a soda water with a lime and a splash of cranberry. That's typically what we recommend. And you're still out there. You're still having fun with your friends. It doesn't mean that you need to go out and have, you know, three, four plus drinks, you know, per night. The other thing could be when you're going out to dinner, again, you can still have fun. You can still enjoy going out to dinner, but maybe you you decide to order the salmon with the side of you know extra vegetables or whatever it might come with. You can still enjoy a nice, healthy meal, and it's the company of the people that you're with and the environment that you're in that should create the pleasure, not necessarily the, the pasta dish that you're eating or, or splitting all of those you know spinach and artichoke appetizers, all of those specific things. So... Be confident in you. It, it takes a while and it doesn't happen over, overnight, but the more you use that muscle, the more you're able to be confident in yourself, that's contagious. I mean, people really like to see that. They're like, wow, you know, this person has made a commitment. And sometimes it motivates others to do the same. A lot of times when you're in a setting of a group of friends, they're looking for that one person to give them that little push. And that we see that over and over and over, whether it's in our, our Boston you know, weight loss practice as well, where we do personal training um, too. And we have one person start. And then like three or four of their, uh, five of their friends also join because they're like, yeah, I need that as well. I need to stay motivated. I need someone to keep me accountable. And they all go out to dinner together. And guess what? They're eating healthy. They're drinking. And, and they're, you know, they're having a great time without all of the other previous patterns that have really just set into how you usually and typically enjoy social settings. Hopefully that answers your question. So this is an interesting question because you can go either way in this. So would you share your goals with others? And so I like to say this, if you have a supportive environment where people are going to say, that's a great goal, I support you in this, meaning like, let's say that you have a supportive family, you have supportive friends, you have supportive parents, whatever it might be, then I have no problem with you sharing those goals. And this is why. If you share your goals with others, it kind of makes you stay accountable to them. Meaning once you've shared your goals, you're basically saying to people, hey, I set out to accomplish this look for me, this to happen within the next few weeks or next few months and they're going to call you on it. And that's a really nice thing. So not only have you kind of put it out there to the world that you're going to accomplish whatever your goal is, you're now saying to people, keep me accountable. Look at this. And then those people are going to say, that's a fantastic goal. I know you can do it. And they're going to offer you support. I love that. I think that's fantastic. But the reason when not to do it is this. Let's say you're, again, with friends who might not share the same values or when you share those goals with them, they say, what do you need to do that for? You're fine how you are. You know, what are you going and changing? Do you think you're better than us? All of those things. And, and those are not the type of people that you want to share your goals with. 
do it quietly, do it on your own, and that's okay as well. Meaning this, share it with the people who you know will be supportive of you, even if it's only one person. Don't share it with those who are gonna pull you back from achieving your dreams. It's not worth it. Next question. So what are some tips for self-care? I consider self-care to be a little bit different for each person, but you at least have to have the fundamentals. So the fundamentals are this. In my practice, people have to do a few things. One is they need to be eating in a good nutrition plan, which means you have to somewhat prioritize where you're going to be picking up lunch if you don't make it for yourself and where you're having for dinner and if you're making a smoothie in the morning, which is what I, you know, I recommend. What are you using for good nutritional supplements? Do you consider those a priority in your life, at least a you know, good quality smoothie powder or multi or omega-3 or whatever it might be? And then what are you doing on a daily basis for detoxification or something that's going to help you combat the 77,000 plus chemicals we're exposed to in the environment every single day and every single year? Um, Things that most people don't even know about, but if you were to have your blood tested right now, you would see that you have at least at least 200 different toxins in your blood most likely right now. What are you doing on a daily basis? It can be as simple as dry brushing or taking Epsom salt baths or all sorts of different things. You know, a sauna, um, those are all fantastic to do. And then you're looking at sleep. Where, you know, what are you doing right now for your sleep regimen? Do you kind of let's say like, well, well, if I get six hours, it's fine. If I get eight hours, that's fine too. You know, what's your regimen for getting to bed on time and trying to wake up at the same time every day so that you're not a victim to being groggy every morning when you wake up and having to use that alarm clock and all those specific things. So I consider those and others part of the the self-care regimen is making sure basically that you have a routine. Because again, if you're not setting yourself up as a priority, if you're not putting them in your calendar, if you're not making it part of a routine, it's not going to happen. Things only happen when you prioritize them and you put them in your schedule. That's it. So let's put them in your schedule. And then additional self-care items might be, what are things that you enjoy doing? Some people love to walk and that's a lot of their exercise. Some people love going for a spin class, they love doing yoga, they love going for a steam or um, a spa day or just massage or like I said, a dry sauna. Those are all really, really nice. Especially during the winter time in a cold environment and climate, going for a workout or going for a massage and then doing a sauna is just, it's absolutely fantastic. It warms your body up, helps you detoxify during those cold times. A lot of people don't sweat also all winter, so that's another nice way to detoxify. So I would say is look at the items for self-care that you would love to be doing and just pick maybe one a week or create your exercise routine and then just say one extra a week, which might be one sauna a week or steam a week, one massage a month or every other week, and then go from there. So what I would say to you is prioritize just a couple things for self-care that you really need to make a priority. And if you haven't done the sleep portion and you haven't done the good nutrition portion, the exercise portion, those have to come first and then work for kind of the add-on benefits afterwards. Hopefully that made sense. If you have more additional questions that want to get more detailed on my self-care routines, different things I would recommend in there, please just let us know. I'm always happy to answer those. We'll be back real soon with another Cabral House Call. Thank you for just tuning into the Cabral Concepts. I want to make you aware of a really fun contest we have going on right now in January. And what we're gonna do is we're actually giving away over $2,000 in prizes. Uh, This is amazing stuff. This is all things that people use in my own Boston practice, and it's completely free to enter. All you have to do is simply download, subscribe, and review this podcast. Just, you know, give it, hopefully, five stars or as many stars as you can give it, uh, right on iTunes. Very, very simple. To get the full details, simply go to cabralpodcast.com.